Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We bring greetings from Praise Temple this morning on this uh, September 18th, 2022. And we give God praise for being in this Sunday school session on this morning. So glad you're with us this morning in the name of the Lord. Praise God. We thank God for those who are with us online this morning. I'm going to just ask that you share us with your family and friends on today. Amen. And ask God to touch you at the point of need. Today, we are in our lesson dealing with the promise of obedience. Amen. Amen. It comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, 1 through 6, and the 24, 3 through 8, places Mount Sinai, times 440, 1445 BC. Our golden text says, Moses came and told all the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and, and he and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. Amen. 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 Very, very profound lesson today because I love the name because uh, there are promises attached to our obedience. Amen. Amen. To the things of God. Now, some people say, why is obedience important? Obedience is important because the Lord <clears throat> is the owner of heaven and earth. Amen. And the Lord we serve, he's gracious, he's kind, he's, he's powerful, he's a judge, he's a God of judgment and a God of justice. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the way that we obtain uh, a dominion in the earth and the way that we will obtain the kingdom of God is through obeying the one that owns these two items. Amen. 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 So that is why obedience is important, because obedience is not just about what's happening right now, temporarily on this earth. You have to realize that everything that we're doing right now is going to stop and pass away. Okay. Amen. But we have to make our mind up. Praise God of what we're going to do that's going to have an everlasting or eternal basis or effect on our life. And that is what I, that is the principle that the Lord is really instilling in the people of God here as they come out of Egypt. And that's where we're going to start here in Exodus chapter 19 this morning. And let's read Exodus chapter 19, verse number one. Let's read. It says in the third month. When the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came unto they the wilderness of Sinai. So the first thing is that exactly three months after God had delivered them, now they have traveled, praise God. And now, uh, remember last week, they were supposed to be the beginning of time, the beginning of, of, of seasons. God reset the clock, caused the Passover to take place, ushered the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Amen. They, they come out of Egypt and they're faced with the Red Sea. They get to the Red Sea and God goes behind them, holds off the army. Then Moses sticks out a staff before them. God goes and causes an east wind to blow. And the phenomena of not only so much that uh, the Red Sea backs up, but the phenomena truly is that they walk across on di dry ground, Amen. dry ground. Now, one thing we have to consider is that in the bottom of the ocean, Praise the Lord. Water is still there. But when they walked across, there was no water, even in the bottom, even though everything else was dry. God allowed them to walk across on dry land in the midst of the waters. Amen. Uh, so God does this. So that he does this to Im impress upon them that he is their God and their deliverer. Amen. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Deke. Water, the Bible said they, the water stood up. What it said, water stood up on both sides and allowed them to pass. Amen. Amen. So they so they walked through, and there was walls of water on both sides as they walked through on dry land. Amen. I don't care what you say, it took some faith to do that. Praise, Praise that. It Amen. took some faith just to walk through the midst of the waters. Amen. Uh so three months after God delivers them, now they've gone came to the wilderness of Sinai. Amen. And as they, they have they have had some challenges, but now God is getting ready to impart to them some some directions for what they are going to do. He says, look, what he says, and, and Sinai was in the southern part of the peninsula after they come across the Red Sea out of Egypt. For they, let's read verse two, for they were departed from Rephaim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and their Israel camped before the Mount of God. So here, remember, how many people came out of out of uh, of Egypt? Over two million. Over two million people. So that was a large encampment. Amen. Amen. Most major cities. Amen. Fredericksburg don't even have two million people in them. 
Do you believe that? A population larger than the city we live in came out and were walking in the midst of the desert. And they camped at the Mount Sinai. They count at the base of the Mount. Now God has given them some rest in order to be able to speak his law and his directions into them. After God had done these 10 miracles in Egypt, after God had raised his mighty hand and brought them through, God had manifested a pillar of fire by night, praise God, to keep them warm because the desert's cold at night. Yes, and to erect a pillar of cloud by day to give them shade in the heat of the day. Praise him. Then food just fell out the sky. Lord help us, Jesus. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Food just fell out the sky. And the food was so, and the food knew what day it was. Right. Because every day they're supposed to go and take up the food for the day. And then during the Sabbath, they would take up enough for what? Two days. You can't tell me God ain't bad. And he let food know how long it's supposed to last. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And here they are now. And when they get here, Moses knows this area because God had trained Moses on the, these last 40 years in these desert areas. That's why, church, you can never negate what God had you doing before you came into the kingdom of God. A lot of skills, a lot of gifts, a lot of abilities that God has naturally taught you to do are really for you to do in the kingdom. Preparation. Amen. Preparation for the kingdom. Yes. Praise God. Paul did it. Moses did it. Praise the God. And others did it in the word of God. He says here. So now they camp. So now they're, they are stationary. The pillar would have stopped. And that's where they would have stopped and camped. And God would have told Moses to inform the people or the elders to share to the people what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He said, now let's read verse three. Now that's the camp, right? Verse three, let's read. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain Thanks. saying, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. So now look, God called who? Moses. Moses. God called who? Moses. I want to make sure I'm going to say it again. God called who? Moses. God called Moses. Amen. And praise God. God had the man of the hour. Praise him to speak to the people of God. Amen. Moses was the man of the hour for, for, for to talk to God, talk to the people. And now Moses now, because he becomes the mouthpiece of God. Amen. Anytime in the Old Testament, when you were somewhat of a mouthpiece of God, you were the prophet of God. So Moses is considered a prophet. Amen. Because he's declaring what God is going to say to the people. But we see here that we see God called Moses unto him out of the call him up to himself. Praise God. God always, God never calls us down. God calls us where? Up. He wants you to come up, up out of your situation. He wants you to come up a little bit higher. He wants you to do a little bit better. It's the devil that wants you to do worse and be dragged down in the muck and mire. God's always trying to bring us what, church? Up. Encouraging, uplifting, strengthening, empowering. Amen. Mobilizing, strengthening, broadening, encouraging, widening. That's the Lord we serve. Amen. Don't ever forget it. Praise God. Sometimes we forget it because the opportunity comes in our life and it seems so big. There's that many Lord. Yeah, the Lord probably in it. So the enemy don't want you to have nothing. That I, I hear a question comment. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to say it just reminds me uh, about elevation. Elevation always comes from above. Right. It'll, it'll never come from below. If you can't, somebody can't push you above if they're below you. And God is always above us, trying to get at us. Right. Always trying to bring us up. Jesus said it very profoundly. He said, if I be what? Lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Praise God. And though Jesus went down into the grave, he didn't stay there. 
Though a righteous man fall up seven times, what you supposed to do? Get up. I said, get up. Righteous men, praise God, and things of God don't stay laying on the ground. They got to get up. Jesus even said, if the, if, if the seed goes into the ground and dies, it got to go down. What? What's it going to do? It's going to grow. It's going to come back up and bring forth what? Much fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Folk. Now, watch this. That is a principle of God. And why I say that is because that God's going to teach them some principles here that are still Old Testament, New Testament, because it deals with who God is. Amen. And one of the main principles that the first thing that God wants us to understand is that <clears throat> he, have, he always will have a spokesman for the hour and he always wants us to what? To rise up out of the situations we're in. Amen. Any other questions, comments from anyone? Amen. Somebody put some questions, comments in the chat today. We want I want to hear from, from our audience today. Is that all right? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. We have a comment from Brother Tony. Yes, sir. Uh, up, up and encouraging and to be better for ourselves. That's correct. Up and encourage and be better for ourselves. Praise God. That's that's that is the promise that the Lord has given us. Thank you, Brother Tony. Amen. He says here, uh, uh, the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt say to who? To who? He got he said he's gonna tell it to who? The people of God. Amen. The house of Jacob. Amen. And the children of Israel. So he's talking to the 12 tribes of Jacob. He says, verse four. Now watch. Now God goes down memory lane. God says, you know, it's important for us to remember what God has done for us. Church praise. Watch this. Praise is based on what God has done. Let everything they have breath. What? Praise the Lord. Praise him. Uh, uh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord Lord for all and forget not all of his what benefits. Praise primarily deals with is celebrating the Lord for the things that he already done for us. Has God done anything for anybody in here? Amen. Of course he has, because he's that type of God. He says, God says, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Y'all see that? And how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Let's start right there. Here, Moses is to tell the people of God, do not forget what I did for you. Amen. The children of Israel observed what happened, but it did not happen to them. Lord have mercy. Because they were in Goshen. Though they were in the midst of Egypt. And the plagues plagued Egypt, but none of them came nigh where they were at. You telling me God knows how to separate? He knows how to separate. He knows how to keep us protected from the things that he's doing to other ones that are not serving him. That's why there could be two people go through the exact same situation. One has a relationship with God. One does not. The one that does not have a relationship with God will go through Many more tests and trials might even not even make it out of it. And you slide straight on through it as if nothing happened. That's the grace of God. He's reminding them of what he's already done for them. Praise God. He says how I bared you on how I bared you on eagle wings. He, he makes an analogy how uh, a, a, a bird, when it throws a little bird out the nest, that it comes up and picks it up and carries it before it hits the ground. When, because because if the Egyptians would continue doing what they were doing, it could have been a possibility that the Israelites could have been wiped out. But God said not so. And we have to understand also that the Lord has a promise on my life. No matter how hard or how tough things get, I cannot die. Because God has plans and purpose in my life. Amen. The enemy can cannot stop the plan of God. He can delay it. He can hold it up, but he can't stop it. Praise God, because he don't have that kind of strength. Praise God. I need to make sure we, sometimes we give the devil too much credit. Amen. He said, I buried up on eagle wings, and guess what I did? And I brought you what? Unto myself. Remember, the message that Abraham, excuse me, the message that Moses had to Pharaoh was that what? Let my people go, that we may, may go and what? Worship God. Praise God. And God heard their cry. And he said, you know what? He says, Egypt ain't going to let them go. I'm going to make a way for them to let you go. And I'm going to bring you up. And he says, look, I brought you unto myself. Here I am. 
here you are. And that's what we, that's what I'm getting ready. That, that was the plan from the beginning. When I promised Abraham, I'll make your people as what? The stars in the sky. And your people as what? The sand on the seashore. It must have been a mighty sight to look out across the camps and see over 2 million people camped in the camp. That must have been an awesome sight. And that is what the promise that God fulfilled and gave to Abraham hundreds of years ago. And now we see the fulfillment of God's plan taking place. Any questions, comments, anyone? Deke, you got anything to say? Go ahead, Deke, we'll talk to him. Well, I, what I was reading past is that on verse 4, you have seen what I did. He wanted to remind him because, you know, it's so easy for us to forget what people, you know, when someone does something for us. And he said, I, and he was reminding them that he was always with them because, like he said, when the when the birds are born, when they normally fall, their legs are not strong enough so he can scoop them up and lift them up as an eagle. Right. And he was showing them that I have all this power. And he reminded them of the 10th plague right. that he had did. Amen. Amen. Any other questions or comments right here? This is this is good because I want you to understand that the Lord has to do what? The Lord calls us to himself. Right? We have when God calls, the question is, do we hear? Everybody hears, but do we respond? Amen. And the key thing is that people hear the word, but do they what? Respond to the word and do something about what they've heard. You'd be surprised how many people know they need to be in church this morning. And, and the spirit is nudging them. Either what, get online or come to the house of God and they roll over. <clears throat> <laughs> Someone don't talk about don't you? And, and I'm encouraging you, the Lord is tapping you on your shoulder and you hear me in this virtual space. Praise the Lord. And, and God is, is, is pushing you to go that way. God has something for you today at the house of God. Don't have to be this house of God, but wherever, if you're listening to the sound of our voice, go and see what God has. Go with a, go with a mind of expectation that God's going to meet you there. Amen? Yeah. Dick, I saw your hand in the back. All right, Dick, go ahead, Dick, cut your hand. They didn't know were they encouraging each other? Well, I would I would think so because in a certain sense that they had to make sure that they were, you know, where they were broken into tribes. And those tribes did hang together. And those tribes were all there, they were they were related. So it was really just family. You know, a tribe the tribe was all one family. So I'm sure they were encouraging one another to keep on moving. But remember, the Bible says everybody that came out of Egypt was not what was not of, of Israel. It, a mixed multitude came out of there. So there was the tribes, but then some Egyptians came with them too. Some Egyptians, you know, saw G, saw, saw the Lord, say, you know what? I ain't, I'm not suffering. <laughs> I ain't suffering with them folks. I'm gonna go here with these folks. But guess what? Those were the ones that caused a lot of turmoil after they got out to the wilderness. Also, because it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. Amen. Though God had fed them, God had clothed them, God had provided for them. Uh, 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 they did. They they weren't provided for the way they thought they should have been provided for. And I think it was a couple of quarters ago in Sunday school we talked that Moses talked about all the times every time Moses got ready to do something, the people that rose up and said something. And cause some turmoil in the midst of the wilderness. Uh, so uh, that's, I believe they're encouraging one another. Deep, uh, Murray, you have something? Yeah, I was just, you know, we were talking about how, how God is reminding us what a gracious God that we have, right? That although He has every right to take us out of our disobedience, He continues to remind us, He continues to tell us, hey, remember what I did? Remember, He's always bringing something back to our remembrance. And how we, because we're in the Old Testament, I love how it relates even to the New Testament. When we talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, it's edifying for us, but it's also for the non believers to see what God is doing and still working and how He's doing. So I just love how the comparison, how, how God is always trying to get.
get us back to heaven no matter what we go through and be disobedient. Yeah, yeah, the plan from Genesis to Revelation is about redemption. God wrote to us 66 books about what? Bringing him, bringing us back to who? To himself. Amen. So the plan. So 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 if you ever in doubt about what the plan of God is, the plan of God for man is always to get man back close to him in all any way, shape or kind of way. Praise him. And that is what we have to remember. God is not going to do what? Push us away. He's always trying to what? Bring us back to himself. Amen. And that's what we see here. Look what he says. How, how, how I've done these great things for us. And so remember what I've done. So I've already done some work. Now, he says, look, if. Now, therefore, if. Y'all see that? You know that if is a loaded word, isn't it? If ye will obey my voice indeed. And keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure. Is that what it says? Unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Y'all see that? Is that what it says? So now God has given us what we would call a conditional statement. A conditional statement is if I do something, then God will do something for me. Amen? So uh, he says, just listen to what I have to say. Keep what I am asking you to do. And you shall be what? A, a treasure, a peculiar treasure unto me. We have to remember, church, that my audience is not really man. My audience, even when I'm preaching and ministering, is, excuse me, is the Lord. Is the Lord pleased with me? Praise him. The Bible says, if the if the if a man's ways please the Lord, he'll even make your enemies be at peace with you. Right. Man, that's a powerful statement. He says here that if you do what I ask you to do and follow my direction, yeah. favor and blessing will be on your life. In a natural sense. Y'all see that? Because he directly says, for all the earth is who? It's mine. So God is saying, praise God, that first thing I'm going to do is if you follow my commands and follow my ways, guess what? I'm going to bless you and make you <clears throat> above other people naturally. Because he says, for all the earth is mine. Is that what he says? <clears throat> Excuse me. And we know the earth is a natural place. That makes sense. So God wants to bless us. So we see in the mind of God that God does want to bless us naturally. There's nothing wrong with talking about um, the natural blessings. Amen. But guess what? We cannot have the natural blessings without obeying and following his command. So the next statement he deals with is not the natural blessings, but now he's going to deal with the spiritual aspect. <clears throat> Excuse me. And ye shall be unto me a what? Kingdom or what? Priest. Priest and a what? Holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Y'all see that? So here God, first of all, tells him, obey my voice, keep my commandments. Praise God. And ye shall be blessed in this earth. And then. If you do that also, then I'm going to make you into a kingdom of priests. Priest. What does a priest do? A priest uh, go and speaks on behalf of the people to who? Towards God. They go back. And so, so when we look at directional messaging or the way a message is supposed to flow, we have God that, that is the center, right? So when God releases a message back to man, through a man, he is considered a prophet or a proclaimer of God's word. But then God allows man to come into his presence and speaks back to him. That becomes the office of the priest or the priesthood. So God is letting them know 
that if you do this, because I'll bless you, hopefully you'll be grateful and understand where your blessing comes from. And now you'll begin to offer this, the, prop, the appropriate sacrifices and blessings back to myself. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm encourager. That's why I'm always encourager of people being able to give something to the Lord, tithes and offerings, praise God, because it shows us of our gratitude for what God's done in our life. You say, Pastor, God don't need your money. No, God don't need your money. But guess what? You need your money. <laughs> and when you honor God with your money, guess what? He's letting you know you can be trusted with more. He said, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler. Over me. If you can't give a, on the $10, don't expect God to give you no $100. Amen. I said, amen. Sometimes I'm, I'm a firm believer. Some people can't even handle to be blessed because they don't know how to properly deal with God on, that God that the earth is already his and that that we don't understand sometimes that when I give my portion to God, that opens the door for God to do more in my life. Amen. It does. It, it, it does not follow man's knowledge. It follows God's knowledge and God's knowledge <clears throat> is still dealing with faith. Amen. So I encourage you, praise God, to do that and ask and watch God turn your life into something different. He said, you shall be a kingdom, <clears throat> excuse me, a priest, and you shall be what? A what? Holy nation, right? Praise God. He's letting them know that you're going to serve me, <clears throat> excuse me, and that you're not going to allow the things of this world to impact you because I'm going to give you everything you need. When we realize we have everything from God, yeah. amen, the world, praise the Lord, becomes second nature, second nature to me. Though I got to be in this world, I cannot be of the world. I got to wear this world as what kind? As a loose garment. And I'm here to let you know that some people have yet to change their garments from the world. You still holding on to them worldly garments. You still holding on to those, girly, those, those worldly ideologies. You still holding on to those worldly thought processes when God is trying to get those things out of you and wrap you in the kingdom of God. Amen. And he says, these are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. Amen. So God gave Moses. He spoke to Moses, gave Moses a message, and he spoke to Moses to speak to the children of Israel. Can we say amen? Amen. Praise God. So here God is leading them where he wants us to go. All right. We shift over to verse the chapter number 24 and verse number three here. And in, in the, the the lesson calls it the conformity of God. All right. He says in verse 24 and verse three, he says, and Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all thy judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said, we will do. Now, the question is. Did they, first question, did they keep those commandments? No, they didn't keep the commandments. All right. Thank you, D. <clears throat> the second question is, praise the Lord, is that did they answer God in faith? Uh, yes. I would say yes. Yes, they did. I said at the present moment, they thought they could do it. They, they, in their mind, their heart, they're going to what? They're going to do it, weren't they? Amen. We found out later on it didn't happen. Sometimes, church, that happens to us. Lord, I'm going to go with you all the way. And we already, as Paul Harvey says, we've heard the end, the rest of the story. <laughs> that that was not the case. But guess what, church? There is forgiveness in the Lord. First of all, you have to have a mind at this present moment to serve God. Amen. We do not know what is going to happen five minutes from now. We don't know. The Bible says, God says it like this to try to help us. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to be glad and rejoice in it we serve god day by day 
And though I may say on Monday, I'm going all the way. Thursday's coming. And sometimes Thursday hits me so hard that I'm not able to fulfill what God has asked me to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? But I'm so glad that the Lord knew Thursday was coming. And God honors my, 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 my today faith, though. He honors my today faith. So we have to serve God and speak to God and love God and trust in God on this current day. Because the word of God teaches us that yesterday's over and tomorrow is not promised. So you got to ask, that's what the saint, that's what the mothers used to say or the pastor say, are you currently saved? I didn't know what they're talking about, but I'm learning what they're talking about now. Say, are you currently saved? Are you saved today? The answer should be, yeah, I'm saved today. I'm doing everything I know to do with today. And that's the life that we have to live. And we have to do that day by day, church. We're not even promised the next minute. But the Lord wants us to continue to talk and live in faith and speak in faith and do what they say. All the words I'm going to do, Lord, I'm going to do everything I can to make this happen. Yes, this one. Amen. And that's what, what we have to understand is that we got to make these promises and these declarations to God today. Praise God. We serve God today, church. And what happens is, is that we're so concerned about what's coming in the future that we that we miss the love and kindness and tender mercies of God currently right now. Amen. Because we don't know what's going to happen day from day. You know, you know, we don't know if this is going to be our last Sunday. In the house of God, we don't know. That's why we have to serve God with gladness right now and, and speak to God in faith right now. Amen. And not be so worried about what the enemy is going to do to us because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Amen. So so they 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 had they had wonderful intentions, didn't they? They've been brought, they've been delivered. God has moved them. Moses has come down the mountain, they received the word of God. And by faith, they say that we know because we have the ability to look back and look at their history that they were not able or they were not able to fulfill this. But right here, right now, they're doing the best they can do. Amen. Amen. When the Bible says we got to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, we got to contend when today. We got to fight today. Whatever comes up today, fight. Amen. Amen. Every battle is not won, but as long as you win the war, praise him, you're going to be all right. Amen. Praise God. That's why Paul says the weapons are warfare or what? Not carnal, but mighty through God. Mighty through God. To the pulling down the stronghold. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I'm mighty through God so that God can do what? Pull down strongholds in my life and look they were they were all in agreement they all said the same thing all the words the lord has said we will do yeah. and moses took it what at their word amen and moses wrote look what he said and god took them at their word praise god amen and the people of god were trusting god today let's just call that sunday but we knew thursday's coming amen but that's why, church, it's very important for us to be ready for what the week may bring, because though we're, we we have a great time in church on Sunday and celebrate the Lord, amen, circumstance situations coming. And I'm hoping, praise God, that the Lord has given us enough word and enough equipment to deal with whatever circumstance coming in our life in the future. And he does that. 
He'll say he'll never put more on us. What church? Than we're able to bear, or able to handle. And if it's more than we're able to handle, he'll make a way of escape. So if you're dealing with something in your life currently right now, I got a, I got a message for you through the word of God this morning. Though you may not think you can handle it, God wouldn't have you in it if you could. And if you and guess what? If you couldn't handle it, he would take some of the pressure off of you. Amen. Praise God. But I'm still believing the word of God. Amen. That you don't get no berry out the juice unless you squeeze it. I'll let you get that on Tuesday. You got the sometimes the press is what causes us to allow the anointing to flow in our lives. Those olives, if they wanted the oil out of the olives, they had to press the olive. Praise God. And we have to know that sometimes the press is what causes us, that keeps us on our knees. The press is what causes us to stay close to God. The press is what calls us, amen, to keep ourselves connected to the Lord. Amen. amen. Praise God. He says here, verse four, Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built it an altar unto the hill. 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, remember, Moses, this is the first interaction with God. Moses has yet to get the law of God. All right. But yet the Lord is directing him on what he needed to do to offer sacrifices unto him. There is still a requirement of God to make blood sacrifices. Y'all remember when Adam and Eve had disobeyed God in the garden? And Adam and Eve went and got some, some leaves to cover them covered her shame. What did God do? God and went and got some skins. Well, well, some animal had to pay for that skin. <laughs> he had to, he went and made them what? Skins to cover them. Is that what it says? So some had to what? Had to die and be sacrificed to cover their shame. That was nothing but uh poetically prophesying about what Christ was going to do with our sin. Amen. When he with the shedding of blood, there is no what? No now it's no shedding of blood. There's no what? Remission of sin. The only thing that the, that the animals would do would just cover it. And that at that, at that time, that was enough for God. Because the skins did what with Adam and Eve? Covered their shame. Right? So they could still be acceptable unto God. But Jesus came to take it a step further. Not only did he die that my sins may be covered, he died that my sins might be removed from me or remitted or taken away. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus took it to the next level. But here he tells them, look, in the morning, build an altar under the hill. I don't know how you get under a hill, but we maybe it's, he's beside a hill. <laughs> Uh, at the 12 pillars, according to the 12 tribes of Israel. So God says, look, let's 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 uh, uh, seal this covenant. Amen. In blood, a blood covenant. He built an altar under the hill with, and he represented all the people of God through the 12 tribes of pillars. And he said, and now look, we see Moses doing what? Sending young men, right? The leader sent some men to delegate, operate in delegated authority. I'm going to say that again. The man of God asked these young men that he delegated to get something done to assist him. Sometimes the man of God that you sit under will ask you to go do something, amen, in order to help him to do the work of God. Amen? Y'all see that? Moses did it. He says here, and he sent young men of the children of Israel, probably somebody out of each tribe, which offered what? Burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. Now, these oxen were oxen that they had brought with them. Remember, sacrifice should always cost us something. They were on, they had limited supplies. They only been out of Egypt for how long? Three months. Three months. So they, they didn't have a chance to, for those oxen and them cattle to be able to have calf, if you please. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So somebody had to pay a price with the, with the supplies 
that they were working with and they were in a the desert. They had limited supply. Amen. You're not going to find a, a ranch of cattle in the middle of the desert. You had to bring that what with you. Someone had to pay the price. And I want to make sure we understand here is that when we offer God a sacrifice, it has to be something that costs us something. Too many times we want the sacrifice to be something, praise God, that works in my schedule. Sometimes God's going to call you to do something that's not in your schedule. And you got to make a decision. Are you going to make the sacrifice? We have made church. And I'm guilty because I want everybody to come to church. You know, praise the Lord. We try to be as convenient as we can. Amen. In and out here. Perfect time. But sometimes God calls us to a place where it's sacrifice. Amen. And pay the sacrifice because what it does is it, it allows us to have peace with God. Praise him. Is that what is that what they offer? They sacrifice. What kind of offerings? Peace offerings. And burnt offering. Burnt offering is like a is a sacrificial offering. It's a free will offering. But the peace offering was to satisfy and have God to be able to be satisfied with me. Amen. Because it cost him with blood and oxen to the Lord. And look, and Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins. Praise him. And half of the blood he sprinkled where? On the altar. Praise God. He, he sealed it with blood, Lord, because God is a God that requires sacrifice. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. So Moses could read and write. Where did Moses learn that at? He learned that in being a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He learned how to read and write because reading and writing was not a skill that everybody knew. But Moses knew how to read and write, and he wrote all these things in a book. And he took the book, and he sprinkled the, the altar with blood. He took, praise God, and he took the book in verse 7 and read in the audience, and all, and, and all that the Lord has said we will do, and we and be obedient. Lord, have mercy. Praise God. That's what he said. Is that what sure y'all what y'all said? We, Lord, we're going to be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord have made with you concerning all these words. So 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 during this time, you were still a covenant with the sacrifice. And that's what Moses was doing. He took the same blood. He covered the altar. He, and he took the same blood and he covered the people and they sacrificed unto God. And that seals the agreement. Amen. God seals the agreement with the people. So now they become a covenant people and they become a blood covered people. See, some people didn't see some people don't realize that God's been covering his people with the blood since God said Moses wrote the wrote the law. We think in this New Testament, we're just getting covered by blood. No, God's been covering people with blood all the time. When God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, they had to be, they had to go out that house under the blood. Because they put blood, blood where? On the doorposts and on the mouths, right? They were covered by blood. When God first showed up to Abraham and made a promise to Abraham. He told Abraham to make a sacrifice and cut him in half and a smoking furnace moved through the midst of those sacrifices. That's in Genesis around the ninth, 12th chapter where God made a promise to Abraham when he first showed up to Abraham. Amen. He sent two angels down to Sodom to get Lot out and he was making a promise with Abraham. And Abraham begged God, God, if you find 50 righteous, don't destroy that place. God said, ain't 50 righteous down there. Sure. He went all the way down to 10 and he didn't, couldn't find 10 righteous. Abraham's Lord, if it pre-adventure, Lord, let it be 10. God said, ain't 10 down there, Abraham. <laughs> but I'm going to get Lot. And Lot was halfway gone himself. Lot's wife was all the way gone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And his daughters were at, were at the mercy of his at their parents. Amen. But God saved them. 
And what I want, and the point that I'm trying to make here with that is that it doesn't matter if it's a hundred or if it's one, God wants to save. Some of us, some of us are the only ones that are saved in our families. I say, Lord, why me? You know, you know what? It's because you, because God had favor on your life. You are special unto God. He said, he said right here, I'll make you what? A kingdom priest, a holy nation. This is in this verse in Exodus chapter 19, verse six. That's where Peter picks up and says, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. You are a chosen generation. And you should show the forth the praise of him that brought you out of darkness into this marvel. life. Peter picks that concept right up out of the word right here. In the New Testament. And we love that scripture, don't we? And we love that one. Praise God. But here Moses took the blood, sprinkled it, and the covenant which the Lord has made concerning all these words. So they promised to obey. Amen. Church, again, how are we supposed to serve the Lord? We serve the Lord when? Today. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. So you so so I want you to in your mind, whatever you did yesterday, it's over. He says, uh, every morning we get what? New mercies. You got some new mercies today. Your mind and I have died every eye, crossed every T on yesterday. Ask God to cover that and live right soberly in this present world today. And pray that he gives us tomorrow. Amen. Blessing of obedience. God bless you. Hope something was said to encourage you today. I'm turning back over to Deacon Gould in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.